Welcome to Mark's Tech Talk. Today's video will look at characterizing or measuring an AC waveform. The AC waveforms we use for circuit analysis are sine waves. Sine because it is the same shape as a mathematical function, sine. So here is a sine wave and uh, we usually assume it's been uh, created a long time ago and continues uh, to be created. Uh, for example, voltage. The generator may have been turned on a long time ago and it's continuing to make voltage. So the question becomes, where do we start counting time? And for analysis purposes, and so everybody does it the same, we make the assumption we'll start counting time at the beginning of the first um, positive half cycle. Uh, so we'll call that time zero right there, right where it starts to begin to make the positive voltage. Uh, and that corresponds to a sine wave if you're a mathematician also. So looking at this sine wave, uh, how can we characterize? Well, first of all, we have some simple things here. The highest point is called the positive peak. The lowest point is called the negative peak. And we'll put that on a graph and try to figure out what's going on here. Uh, in particular, if we measure from a positive peak to a positive peak, uh, we're going to get some amount of time. We're going to call that time the period of the waveform, and we designate it with an uppercase T. So the period of the waveform is simply how much time it takes to go from one point on the waveform to the same corresponding point on the next cycle of the waveform. So here we went from positive peak to positive peak. Likewise, we will also get the period if we measured from the negative peak to the negative peak. Uh, and matter of fact, that will work pretty much anywhere. We'll choose convenient places to measure it. Uh, for example, we could look at the zero crossings. But if you look at zero crossings, you've got to be careful that it's crossing in the same direction. So in this example, we're looking when it crosses zero, going from negative to positive. Look at that at one point on the waveform, and then at the next corresponding cycle, the time between that is the period of the waveform, designated uppercase T. More often when we talk about a waveform, we refer to the frequency of the waveform. Frequency is simply one over the period, the inverse of the period of the waveform. Frequency is measured in units of hertz, and hertz means cycles per second. So frequency is one over the period, Conversely, the period is 1 over the frequency. Period is measured in units of uh, seconds, uh, usually a very small part of a second, a millisecond or a microsecond. And frequency measured in hertz, uh, cycles per second. Uh, looking at the peak and peak to peak, uh, how do we convert between those? Well, we know the peak uh, is the distance from the zero to the highest point, the positive peak, we call that the peak voltage. And peak to peak would be the distance or voltage from the lowest point to the highest point, from the negative peak to the positive peak. So those are pretty straightforward. You can see that the peak to peak value would be twice the peak, assuming the waveform is symmetric, uh, which it will be. Uh, but another way of characterizing that amplitude is something called the RMS voltage. RMS stands for root mean square. And uh, if you do these mathematical procedures, the first thing you do is the square, and that makes all the values positive. It flips around the negative half cycles of the waveform and makes them positive. And then you take the square root, and that adjusts the amplitude back to where it was originally. It's kind of like taking the absolute value of the waveform. Once you've made the negative half cycles positive, then you find the mean. Mean simply means the average. Find the average value uh, once you've flipped around the negative half cycles. That gives you the RMS value. And the RMS value of a sine wave is the same uh, effect as the DC voltage uh, in terms of the amount of heat it would produce in a resistor. So it's kind of equivalent to uh, the DC value. It is sometimes referred to as the effective value. So RMS value and effective value mean the same thing. 
So here's the relationship we have. The peak to peak is twice the peak. Conversely, the peak is half the peak to peak. The RMS uh, is decimal 707 times the peak value. Uh, that's what you would get if you went through that root mean square process. 0 0.707 times the peak value. If you want to go the other direction, the peak value is 1.414 times the RMS. And 1.414 is simply the inverse of 0 0.707. 1 over 0 0.707. Notice the last two that involve the RMS. Those two formulas only work for a sine wave. They're only valid for a sine wave. If you have any other shape of waveform, those would not hold true. Okay, so here's some problems that you can try. Uh, fill in the blanks here. Try to convert from one way of measuring a sine wave into uh, alternate ways of measuring that. And I suggest you just pause the video and work these problems out. And then when you resume it, I'll show you the answers. Okay, so let's take a look at the answers. Uh, here they are. I'll put them all up on the screen, and you can pause the video again and check your work to see if you did it correctly. All right, so that was the amplitude. Let's look at what happens horizontally in the time uh, axis, uh, converting from frequency to period and period to frequency. Again, Pause the video here, and then I will show you the answers. Okay, at this point, hopefully you've worked out these two problems. So the first one, the period is 1 over the frequency. So 1 over 2.1 gig gives us 476 picoseconds. 476 picoseconds. And for the next one, 4.2 nanoseconds gives us a frequency of 238 megahertz. 238 megahertz. All right, if uh, we look at the instantaneous value of the voltage, what is the value of voltage at an instant in time? Uh, we would show that with a lowercase v, and that would be simply the peak value times the sine of the angle. We're going to measure our time in terms of angle uh, within that uh, cycle of the waveform. Uh, if you shift it in time, you just shift it by, uh, again, an angle and just subtract that off uh, before you take the sign. So, uh, again, instantaneous value shown with lowercase v. So, here's an example of that. If we want to know what is the instantaneous value at uh, 230 degrees, and it has a peak value of 15, basically just fill in the 230 in terms of theta and uh, take the sine, multiply by 15, you'll get negative 11.5 volts, okay, because you're actually in a negative half cycle, you're past 180 degrees. Remember, any kind of meter that you use, whether it be analog like this one or digital, uh, you're going to be reading the RMS voltage uh, of a sine wave, okay, RMS value of a sine wave. This is a Simpson uh, it's kind of a classic meter. It's been around for many years. It continues to be used by many technicians. Uh, it's kind of an industry standard uh, for a long time for an analog meter. Oscilloscopes, you can read the peak or the peak-to-peak -peak values. If you're reading peak, you've got to be really careful to set your zero. Uh, it probably be a bit easier to read the peak-to-peak -peak value of the voltage on the oscilloscope. This is an analog oscilloscope. Uh, digital would be the same thing. All right, hope you found that interesting. And uh, stick around and look for more videos on Mark's Tech Talk. Thanks for watching.